टुडे वी डिस्कस सेक्शन 5.5 इन द सेक्शन वी विल डिस्कस ए थ्योरम व्हिच इज एनालॉगस टू द फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ अल्जेब्रा द सेक्शन इज पॉलीनोमियल कॉन्ग्रुएंसेस मॉड्यूलो पी एंड लैग्रांजस थ्योरम द लैग्रांजस थ्योरम इज एनालॉगस टू द फंडामेंटल थ्योरम ऑफ अल्जेब्रा इन कॉम्प्लेक्स एनालिसिस so we uh, start with theorem uh, 5.21 this is what we call lagrange's theorem so uh, in fundamental theorem we discuss uh, the polynomial equations uh, instead we uh, here we discuss uh, polynomial congruence for a given prime p let f of x equal to uh, c not plus c1x plus etc cnx raised to n be a polynomial with some properties uh that is the first we have the degree of this polynomial is n uh with uh integer coefficients that means the c0 c1 etc cn are all integers and we have another property the cn is not congruent to 0 mod p this is analogous to the uh, degree of the polynomial uh or leading coefficient is not equal to 0 like that then Uh, the conclusion of the theorem is the polynomial congruence f of x congruent to zero mod p has at the most uh, n solutions that is n distinct solution here distinct means incongruent solutions okay now we can start proof uh, the proof is by mathematical induction so we uh, apply the induction on n so the least case is uh, uh, n is equal to 1 Uh, that is a linear congruence then this uh, polynomial congruence reduces to c1x plus c0 equal to 0 mod p with c1 not not congruent to 0 mod p this implies uh, the speed does not divide uh, not divides does not divide uh, c1 that implies c1 comma p is equal to 1 that is this series one then uh, by theorem uh, 5.2 we have c1x congruent to minus c0 mod p has unique solution because uh, the gcd of c1 comma p is equal to 1 now this uh, result is true for n is equal to 1 uh, now we will uh, assume that the result is true for every polynomial of degree n minus 1 using that we will prove that every polynomial of degree n has the same property that means it has at most n plus 1 at most n solutions okay so uh, first we uh, assumed the induction hypothesis then uh, we take f of x equal to c0 plus c1x plus etc cn x raised to n where cn not congruent to 0 mod p and we also assume that uh, it has more than n solutions say x0 x1 etc x n that means uh, and we will uh, if we assume this uh, we can get an uh, contradiction then we will uh, see that uh, this has only uh, n, n solutions and incongruent solutions okay uh, for this we start with f of x not uh, we know that f of x not is equal to c not plus c1 x not plus etc c n x raised to n c n x not raised to n that implies f of x minus f of x not then by using the symbol algebra we can write it as x minus x not into g of x for the polynomial of degree uh, degree of the polynomial g is less than uh, n that is x at n minus 1 now we evaluate f of x k minus f of x not equal to x k minus x not g of x k then which is congruent to zero mod p since f of x k and f of x not are zeros of uh, the polynomial congruence uh, and this x not and x k are incongruent modulo of p then we can say that this xk and x0 are distinct solutions of f uh, g of xk congruent to 0 mod p for k is equal to 1 to n so this is a contradiction because this is a polynomial of degree n minus 1 and it has a uh, it has n zeros okay so this is a contradiction then we can as uh, say that this result is true then theorem follows next we have uh, section 5.6 uh, applications of this lagrange's theorem that is analogous to our fundamental theorem of algebra we start with theorem uh, 5.22 uh, if f of x equal to c0 plus c1x plus etc cnx raised to n is a 
polynomial uh, this degree of polynomial is uh, n uh, and all the coefficients are integers okay so uh, now uh, we assume if this congruence f of x congruent to 0 mod b has more than n uh, incongruent solutions okay the distinct solutions then we can conclude that uh, all the uh, coefficients the coefficients means c0 c1 etc cn are divisible by uh, p okay that means if this polynomial congruence f of x congruent to 0 mod p has more than n solution then you can uh, conclude that all the coefficients are uh, divisible by p for that uh, we uh, start the proof like this if there is a there is some uh, coefficients are not divisible by p okay first we as we have assumed that it has more than n solutions and if there exists uh, at least one coefficient which is not divisible by p uh, so we choose uh, the largest such integer index uh, ck uh, is the largest uh, coefficient or uh, largest indexed coefficient with uh, ck is not congruent to 0 mod p if if there exists at least one then you can choose the maximum of such coefficients okay then this case always less than or equal to n then the congruent uh, congruence relation reduces to c0 plus c1 x plus etc ck x raised to k congruent to 0 mod p and uh, it has n solutions more than n solution then of course this this congruence uh, 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 congruence has more than n solutions then by previous theorem we can say that ck is the high the largest coefficient ck is divisible by p this is a contradiction because uh, we have chosen this ck as uh, uh, the coefficient which is not divisible by p so this is a contradiction then our assumption is wrong that means every coefficient is divisible by uh, p now we have another interesting theorem theorem 5.23 uh, uh, for any uh, that means we will uh, apply the uh, previous theorem to a particular uh, particular polynomial for any prime p all the coefficient of the polynomial uh, we write the polynomial as f of x equal to this is a typical polynomial x minus 1 x minus 2 etc x minus p minus 1 minus x raised to p minus 1 plus 1 okay so uh, the theorem says that all the uh, coefficients of this polynomial is divisible by p for that we split this f of x into two distinct polynomials uh, let, uh, say g of x g of x is x minus 1 into x etc x minus p minus 1 uh, then clearly this 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 are the zeros of this g of x okay that is obvious and uh, we will uh, find the other part of this f of x as h of x okay uh, before that this g of x is uh, 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 uh, are 0 means g of x congruent to uh, 0 mod p for all x equal to 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 these are the exact solutions of g this polynomial congruence g of x congruent to 0 mod p now we define h of x h of x is x raised to p minus 1 the, obviously uh, if we apply euler format theorem we can say that h of x is 0 mod p for all values of x equal to 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 we can, we can say that the, these 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 are uh, 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 co prime to p then uh, Euler from as theorem holds then this f of x can be written as g of x minus h of x that is congruent to 0 mod p uh, for x equal to 1 to the x of p minus 1 but the degree of this uh, h of x is nothing but uh, p minus 2 if you can cancel this x raised to p minus 1 from the uh, two polynomials then by previous theorem we can say that uh, all the coefficients of this polynomial uh, is divisible by p now we have an interesting theorem uh, we have already uh, seen this theorem in the uh, undergraduate classes that is wilson's theorem for any prime p we have p minus 1 factorial is congruent to minus 1 mod p for every p uh, the proof is very simple if we consider the uh, previous theorem and uh, that polynomial 
x minus 1 into etc x minus p minus 1 minus x raised to p minus 1 plus 1 we have proved that all the coefficients of this polynomial is divisible by p so now we will collect the constant term of this polynomial okay we can say that the first part x minus 1 etc x minus p minus 1 if you multiply these uh, terms we can get x raised to p minus 1 that's the first term and last term is uh, p minus 1 factorial that is 1 into 2 into 3 into etc p minus 1 so that is p minus 1 factorial then uh, the the constant term will be p minus 1 factorial plus 1 then that is congruent to theorem of p so uh, this is the uh, proof of wilson's theorem now uh, I, I give you an exercise uh, you have to prove that the converse of uh, the wilson's theorem is also true so i leave it as an exercise here so you can uh, work it out now we have another interesting theorem 5.25 uh, this is wilson holmes theorem uh, the statement of theorem is for any prime number p which is greater than or equal to 5 uh, we have uh, summation uh, k equal to 1 to p minus 1 p minus 1 factorial divided by k congruent to zero mod p this is for every p with uh, p is greater than or equal to 5 uh, what is the meaning of this uh, congruence that means if you expand this summation you can get p minus 1 factorial by 1 plus p minus 1 factorial by 2 plus etc all the way up to uh, p minus 1 factorial by p minus 1 that is congruent to 0 mod p q so this is actually uh, uh, it is not p q that is p square okay so that means this s p minus 2 congruent to 0 mod p square that is not p cube it is p square uh, what is s p minus 2 s p minus 2 is nothing but uh, the sum of the uh, numbers 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 uh, taken p minus 2 at a time okay that means this is a symmetric polynomial in 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 so we have used these uh, terms to expand the uh, product uh, g of x equal to x minus 1 x minus 2 etc x minus p minus 1 so we'll prove this uh, theorem using this g of x if g of x equal to x minus 1 etc x minus p minus 1 you can multiply this term by term and you, you can collect the uh, term with x raised to p minus 1 and the decreasing power of x then you have s1 s2 etc uh, uh, sp minus 1 sp minus 2 etc are the coefficients of uh, g of x what is sk sk is the sum of the numbers 1 2 3 etc p minus 1 taken k at a time okay that constitute this uh, product g of x but we know that uh, uh, by previous theorem theorem uh, 5.23 uh, we have uh, g of x f of x equal to g of x minus h of x and we have proved that all the coefficients of this f of x uh, are divisible by p okay then clearly uh, all the coefficients of this g of x say s1 s2 etc sp minus 2 okay uh, by neglecting this x raised to p minus 1 and p minus 1 factorial so that uh, that will make uh, change uh, due to this h of x so we can say that uh, f of x equal to x raised to p minus 1 minus s1 x raised to p minus 2 etc plus etc we can get uh, p minus 1 factorial minus x raised to p minus 1 plus 1 so all the coefficients of this f of x is divisible by uh, p uh, consequently we can get uh, s1 s2 etc sp minus 2 uh, are all divisible by p now you can uh, reduce if you consider the term up to uh, sp minus 3 x square you know that sp minus 2 is divisible by p then we can say that uh, this can be uh, reduced uh, into uh, the uh, congruence modulo p cube that is our intention so we write g of x equal to this p minus 1 factorial then we can write it as p minus 1 factorial is equal to p raised to p minus 1 etc so this is uh, by putting uh, x equal to p in the first uh, expression of g of x then we choose the second expression of g of x then you can get uh, this expression then if, if we uh, reduce this equation to uh, modulus p cube you can get sp minus 2 times p is congruent to 0 mod p cube this shows that sp minus 2 congruent to uh, 0 mod p square this is the wilson holmes theorem so uh, with this theorem we can uh, conclude this section so 
uh, I will give you an exercise here. Okay, if you prove this theorem, we need to use the condition that p is greater than or equal to 5. We never uh, indicate that in the proof here. So, you need to find out what is the relevance of p is greater than or equal to 5.